be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, and it is time for another episode of Rabbit Trails. With me today is my friend, my partner uh, here on In Crime, and Max Masano. Max, how are you, brother? Hey, Dennis. I'm great. How are you? I am good. I am good. I'm really excited because uh, God, it's getting warm in California and uh, we're in my time of year, you know, uh, daylight savings time. I love mm -hmm. it when it's daylight when I get up in the morning and it's daylight when I get home. So, so life is pretty good. Pretty good. I'll say. And uh, hectic week again, uh, busy week for a lot of salons. You know, there's a lot of... Uh, salons that business is starting to come back. I, I don't know about it in the Boston market, but here in California, um, people are really starting to call in people that haven't been in for a long time. Yeah. I, had, uh, I had one in yesterday uh, that hadn't been in in five months. And it was just, uh, it's just getting crazy like that. I've had them call me and this other coming back. So thank you, Jesus, for that. Right. Because, oh, man. Let me tell you, brother, it was a little lean here in the People's Republic of California. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. A lot of yeah. my uh, California friends, right? You know, were sweating it for a bit, right? So, yeah, we uh, we stayed in touch with all of our clients, and uh, everything kind of worked out that way for them and for us, and they were all happy. And uh, you know, we, I think staying in touch was an important thing because you stayed in contact. You know, and uh, we kept updating them like, you know, every 30 days we'd send them an update letter and uh, it all kind of worked out for us. But anyway, it uh, looks like things are getting back uh, here on social media. I'm sure you've been reading, right? People are going, oh, my God, live education. It's coming back. Finally, they were excited about that. And I think it's going to come back, but it's probably not going to be here till late summer. I know some people are trying to do it now and uh, um that's that's fine. Uh, but as we said in our podcast, and, and if you haven't heard our podcast, please, uh, you can pick it up. If you are a member of Guru Hair Tribe, you get it automatically. We, lo we load it into that forum. So if you're not a member and you'd like to join our Hair Tribe, you know, apply for uh, admittance and uh, we'd be happy to get you into the group and then you can take advantage of that podcast, which is totally an audio program. And uh, if not, you can find us on Spotify and you can definitely find us on Anchor. So uh, either one of those platforms at this time to pick up the podcast that Max and I do, which is, uh, like I said, it's an audio, audio program. But anyway, Max, we were talking about the combination of education. And I think that there's always going to be a place for digital education here online, but uh, I see probably, you know, in-person physical education coming back, maybe the end of summer, late summer, maybe early fall. I know a lot of people are trying to get it to happen sooner, but we don't want to rush things. You want to just make it something that uh, people can uh, prepare for. Yeah. How totally. you feel about that? Do you think you do? I'm, I'm totally with you. And in fact, I was, uh, listening to clubhouse earlier and you know they're they're actually planning shows right now for like late august early september so yeah you know i think if if all goes well in the next few months and you know they keep rolling out the vaccines and all that and right. we'll be we'll be good to go you know it's a it's an interesting thing like i i will be really excited for you know live in-person events, but I really think, as I know you do, because we discussed this earlier on the podcast, that the uh, digital education is still gonna hang in there really right. strong. It's just because it's so convenient, you know what I mean? And it's like, who, who doesn't want, you know, a, <clears throat> that accessibility, but in the privacy of their own home? Right, absolutely, absolutely. So, and there's a lot of people that, they don't live close to a cosmopolitan area where they can get to an airport easily, right. you know, and travel. And believe me, travel is going to get more tedious than it was before. It's not as easy. It hasn't been for years, but now it's even going to be worse because, you know, 
unless you have the right paperwork, you know, they're not going to have as many flights, all of these kinds of things. So, well, and they've even started limiting the number of direct flights, like, right. like for instance, like from uh, Boston to Tampa, there used to be all these direct flights all day long. Now there's two direct flights, one in the morning, one in late evening, right. and then the rest are all connecting. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's almost like, uh, I don't know, like this might be dating some people, but even like after uh, we, we kind of had to go through a travel adjustment period after 9-11. Yes. You know, this is going to be very similar because like all the rules are going to change. Right. I totally yeah. agree. So um, anyway, so today let's talk about breaking the rules. Oh, you know. Uh, breaking the rules yeah because here's that classic statement right it says you got to know the rules before you can break them and um and, and yeah it makes sense however i don't always think the rules are what you're breaking it's, it's, rules i find are written by manufacturers mm -hmm. principles are parts of science right so so i might break a rule but as long as I, uh, it fits into the principles of science, right? No harm, no foul, right? Well, but, it's like you you can't break a principle, you know? Right. It's because it's just what it exists in that self evident form in the universe, right? You know, right. Um, you can break a rule. A rule is different than a principle. Oh, it is. Yeah. I mean, when you talk about principles, I mean, they're really universal. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, where you live, what your ethnicity is, what elevation you're <laughs> located at, what geographical location you are. Uh, principles affect all of us, you know. Right. And so, so they're universal. They're also, you know, they stand the test of time. I mean, today we talk about technology in in hair color, and yet we're still using the same basic tools that we've used for 60 years, mm -hmm. simply because we use acids and alkalis. And the one thing that doesn't change or hasn't changed in 60 years is the human species. Right. Right. So the hair is still carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. That hasn't changed. And the hair still has a cuticle layer. Yeah. It still has a cortex. <laughs> they didn't go anywhere. It didn't you go know, anywhere. You know what's so crazy? It's like, if you really think about, do you know what has changed in the last 60 years? Marketing. And yes. that is, you know, what has sort of like, you know, ushered in the new, new, you know, whatever, insert your technology here. Right. But, you know, at the end of the day, every, you know, hair color you've got has got an alkalizer. Mm -hmm. It's got dye intermediates, it's got modifiers, and it's got couplers in it. And it's mixed with a developer. And, you know, you put it on the hair, and it does right. its business. Yeah. And the hair still has disulfide bonds and it has mm -hmm. cysteine bonds. <laughs> it still has salt bonds and it still has hydrogen bonds. That's right. So sometimes I think is that when we hear about, you know, new things like amazing products and, and I mean, one of the things that falls into that category is all the new, I call them buffering products, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, basically, and none of them are bad, but they're all really, they're more similar than they are different. Sure. I mean, because really what they're doing is they're kind of slowing down the color process a bit. They're, um, you know, kind of buffering the breakdown of the hair structure. Um, there are some things that some of them, you know, are doing some things they say they're doing that they're actually not right, but, but they make it sound so phenomenal. Um, 
I think of one recently that said they can repair or replace replace the bonds in your hair permanently. Permanently. That's now a that's a that's a bold, broad. Oh, that's, that's a, a big reach, that. isn't it? Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, because <laughs> here's what we know. You know, science says you can't do that. Right. That's a principle. That's science. But yet, those are the things that, that, that we have to deal with in the business. So let's talk about breaking the rules. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I break the rules. I, I think because we, our information is grounded in science and fact, I think people believe that we don't ever try to, to paint outside the box, if you will. But, but we do. I mean, right. we had this conversation today. You were talking about the way you mix sometimes when you feel like it, when you have that mm -hmm. creative urge that you mix direct dyes in with your color while your color is processing on the head. Yes, that's what you were sharing with me. Yes, that is 100% true. So tell us how you, how you do that. What, what makes you come up with that kind of a thought process? So, you know, I, let's, let me give you a, like a great example where, you know, like I, I've got a retouch on, let's say I'm doing, you know, 100% gray retouch, half six N, half six gold. 20 volume. It's kind of like one of my go-to formulas. Mm -hmm. I know it's not super exciting or anything, but it's, <laughs> it's pretty, it works. It's the um, most popular color, most popular formula six. in the world. Right. Um, so points for originality for me. <laughs> um, but let's say like, I'm going to, I'm going to refresh her faded mid lengths and ends. Right. Right. And normally I'll, I'll pick a, a demi-permanent color, two levels lighter and warmer. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'll, I'll use a level eight uh, with some gold and, but let's say for, for instance, in my color line, that level eight gold is kind of weak or wimpy. And I just want to like add a little something to it. That's going to amp it up without like making it really orange or adding a copper or, or you know, messing around. I'll, I'll literally take some like direct dye yellow Mm -hmm. And it could be in pigmented conditioner form or the actual, you know, direct dye from the tube, depending. And I'll just squeeze a little bit in with my mix and, you know, make sure it's mixed thoroughly. We actually at the salon, we use, it's called the ping. It looks like a penguin, but it's a. Oh, I've seen a, it. It's a little it's mixer a thing. Aid. Yeah. It's a KitchenAid. Oh. And it's great when you're working with, you know, really strong concentrates or something that you, sure. you want to really make sure it's it's really well blended uh, into the emulsion. So I'll just like, you know, add a little direct dye to what I'm working with. And, and the, the science is still, you know, the direct dye is a direct dye. It's gonna do one thing, right. but it's still gonna do what it's doing while the color's doing what it's doing, you know? So it's just a little, it's just a little way that I kind of- um, A lot of doings there. Yeah, Do, doing what it's doing while the color is doing what it's doing. <laughs> exactly. Well, they're they're two different technologies, right? So they're yes, in, they are, they're, and they're working independently, but for but like a team for the same purpose. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know people watching you right now that are saying, "Wait a minute, you can't do that," you know. But it, again, it's like we talk about being creative, and yet we sometimes are the most anal people in the world. You know, I can't do that because this one's different than that one. Right. Well, there's, there, there is some difference, but what do you think create, we use to make brightness and color before we had those oxidative dyes that created bright, intense right. colors? We use direct dyes. Or what about the tube of color that when you, you know, puncture the top and squeeze it into the bowl, it's not just white cream. It, it comes right. out already colored. Exactly. Guess, guess what's in there, you guys? Direct right. dyes. Right. So I'm just making my own. Right. So when someone, the, they'll watch and they'll, they'll see people using the blues and the pinks and 
the greens. And I go, well, I can't use those when my, I, my clients would never allow me to make their hair green or blue. Well, you don't have to do that, but boy, could you use some green to refine warmth? That would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Could you use some blue to refine strong red, orange tones? Absolutely. You could. Uh, could you use some yellow like Max uses yellow? I love yellow. Yellow is one of my favorite color yes. only because it's the color of happy. And second of all, it makes my, my color happy because when I'm using it with brunette shades and I add a little bit of yellow into my formulation, it makes it not look so harsh. It doesn't yeah. look so flat or so strong. So uh, yeah, I think that's a great, uh, a great example of breaking the rules and, uh, I think sometimes we we're afraid to do that and, and yet that you can do that mm -hmm. as long as you understand the principles. All he's doing is just adding to what is already on the head. You know, um, I talk about that in color correction. I always say when your colors finish processing, wipe down a section. If the section is not red enough, guess what? You can add red right now before sure. you take it off the head. You know, and so, so I think that we have to, you know, just because the color is oxidizing and processing, the train has not left the station completely. Mm -hmm. You can make adjustments along the way. So I think that's a great idea. I think pe more people should experiment with that. And even if you're afraid to mix them together, even if you use them separately from each other, make it a two-step color. I mean, I did that with a client. Mm -hmm. I think Max, I told you, she, she flies from Australia to have me color her hair because no one can make her hair red enough. And so I use the vi most vibrant bright red shades I have. And then when I take that color off, I now then glaze her with a mm -hmm. direct dye red orange. Sure. And she, <laughs> I'm telling you that hair is, iridescent it glows and that's why she comes to me uh <clears throat> and i couldn't have gotten that in one step it, it sometimes it takes two steps mm -hmm. to achieve that kind of a result so that's a great way to do it um you know one way i break the rules in fact i did yesterday is that um the current line of color that that i use in my salon i use several different color types in my salon but one that I use has, uh, you know, it's a small collection of colors. It's only about 36 shades on the line. And um, the client who came to me yesterday, I hadn't seen him since October of 2020. And so he came and I had been using a high lift on him up to that point because he just had to be blonde and he could never be blonde enough. That was the whole story. So he came in yesterday and his hair was extremely blonde, you know, it was extremely blonde. And of course he said, well, you have to change my formula because I'm older now and I can't be having this blonde hair. <laughs> I said, okay, I haven't seen you for five months. And the first thing you do is complain. Okay. Well, I said, what I told him, I said, didn't anyone ever tell you it's good not to insult someone just before they're going to use chemicals on your head. You know, <laughs> he laughed about that. So anyway, and the line that I use, I, they have a nine level color in the natural family and it's absolutely a beautiful shade, but it's more of a cool shade. It's not got a lot of warmth in it. And the rest of the, the, the other families in that, in that color line, there are no nines that are warm, but what I what we did have in that line is we have what is called permanent rapid toners, which are nothing more than permanent hair color that based upon how long you process it tells you what kind of deposit you're going to get. So uh, most all of those rapid toners set at about a level eight maximum dye development level eight. They can't be any darker than that. So what I did is I took and I mixed a level nine and then I mixed a color that's called sand. That's one of the toners. It's sort of a tan so with a little bit of a gray base. I mixed that in with the formulation and just did a simple color application on him. And um, it came out fabulous. So, and, and when I, I actually built that line of hair color and what I told them when 
you use those rapid toners, you can also use them as accent colors. Now people say, well, wait, it's a toner. It's not color. No, there is no such thing as a toner. There's not a, a, a thing called toner. Right. Toners are used are permanent hair colors. Toning is using permanent hair color to tone the hair. Toning is a service. <laughs> it's not a product. Well, you say, well, but my brand makes a toner. That's, that's true, but it's really, they're not different. They're not any different than permanent hair color. And so you can do that. I mean, you can use other colors from other families as accent colors in your formulation. You know, oftentimes, you know, you hear me talk about gray. I love gray when I use it to refine warmth. I don't use blue or green because I find that those are too harsh and I don't want to pull everything to the center of the color wheel. I'll use gray. Gray is a balance of blue, red, and yellow. It's in the center of the color wheel. It'll cut enough warmth out of the color, but make it still have its own characteristics. It'll have its own tonal reflex. Uh, so, so people need to learn to expand and experience. That's why swatching is important. Definitely. Right. Because if you swatch out your brand, you'll know what colors you have to work with. Yeah. You know, that's what I find real, real important. Uh, and what they'll, and what they'll actually do. That's the thing. It's like, just because, and I know we, we've said this in other rabbit trails and in class, but just because a manufacturer says one thing doesn't necessarily mean that that is reality or that right. applies to every shade in a particular family. You know, yes. every now and again, you can have a shade that is e extremely dark or even extremely weak. Oh, yes. You know, compared to the other ones in the family. So it's always better, you know, to just do your swatch outs and no. Right. I mean, there's nothing worse than being disappointed, especially when you're using something new. Mm -hmm. And then and then a lot of times what we do as hairdressers, if if one thing doesn't work that we thought was gonna work, we just write the whole line off as oh, it didn't work. I don't like that color line. Right. Where it could it could just be like that one shade maybe kind of sucked, you know? Or yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's, Oh God, I'll tell you if there's a lot of good, but you're going to find some idiosyncrasies yeah. in the line that you work with, because that's just the way it happens sometimes. Right. You know, so add direct dyes, you can add direct dyes to your color to enhance it. Um, you can actually, you know, take some of your other families of colors, or if you have concentrate, you can use them in the same way, adding to them to your formulation to create the effect you want. The reason I use the rapid toner is because it sets at a level eight. Mm -hmm. I was using a level nine. Right. So they were right there together. They were exactly where I needed them, where I needed them to be. And so, uh, that's another great way of breaking the rules. Can't mix a toner. I remember when I worked for Redken, they said, you know, because they we were teaching them to refresh the mid lengths and the ends with shade DQ. Mm -hmm. And then the corporate people said, but remember, don't let them touch. And we thought, well, why? What's wrong with them touching? <laughs> if they touch, the, nothing's going to happen. They're both permanent air color. Right. You know, but they were so concerned about that. And I think that's the thing is that we, again, we're so anal about those things that we don't think that we can make those things, those things actually happen. I mean, right. see, a lot of times I will take a color while it's processing of the last 10 or 15 minutes, and I'll take my lightener, powdered lightener with water, and I'll mix it into a paste. And I'll just go around the front of the hairline and I'll paint it on the front of the hairline mm -hmm. with my etching brush, which is a little triangle uh, brush. And I'll let it process for 10 or 15 minutes. I'm not going to make highlights, but what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to create dimension. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dimension <laughs> is another word for uneven hair color. Right. Okay. That's really what it is. And it's a one-time thing because what's happening is when I put a lightener into a color that's oxidizing, I am destroying some of the dyes. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing. So whatever color I create, that will be that color one time. The next time I do it, it might be slightly different. But we do that sometimes to create some different effects and can you do that? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, are the rules, do the rules say you can do that? Probably not. Well, it's like the, you know, it's like one of the, the first things that we're taught when we're learning hair color is that old adage, color doesn't lift color. Mm -hmm. And I, I've always felt like that, that phrase should have been changed just a yes. little bit to color doesn't lift color predictably. Right. But you can absolutely mix up, you know, something that's really alkaline. You bet. That's not bleach and put it over something that's been previously dyed a deeper shade. And you might get some movement. You might get removal. Oh, right. But, but it's all based on you know, the canvas you're applying it to. And it's, you know, it's not every time and, you know, the, hence strand test, you know? Right. Well, you're using alkalinity. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm telling you, there has been so many times when if I had a brunette shade that finished a little flat and I wasn't happy with it, I could take, a lighter shade, even a medium to light blonde shade. Mix it with 20 volume, just like I mixed the previous mm -hmm. color. Apply that over that color, that previously tinted hair. There's not going to be lift, but what is there's going to be is brightness because the alkalinity, it, here's what it's going to do. The alkalinity is going to swell the hair. You can't help that. That's right. what it's going to do. It's going to swell the hair. Peroxide is going to release oxygen. So it's going to fracture some of the natural melanin along with some of the artificial dyes that you put in there previously. Right. Which means it's not going to be the same. And at the same time, it's going to, it's going to carry in some of the new dye intermediates so you're going to create a completely different color. So if I have a, let's say a light brown head of hair and it really finished flat, could I take a level eight copper blonde with 20 volume, put it over the top of it and warm it up? The answer is absolutely I could. Mm -hmm. Not because of anything other than the alkalinity because the, the ratio of fixed alkali, the ratio of fixed alkali changes at level. So as I get lighter, the ratio of fixed alkali is, is higher. Now, I didn't say the alkalinity is higher. I didn't say the pH was higher. I said the amount of fixed alkali you have, you have more at a lighter level than you have at a darker level. And therefore you're going to get more um, reflection created in your color result so you can do that all the time yeah i actually remember you kind of just jarred another little thing that i learned a long time ago i used to work for a color manufacturer and we had this product that was a color but it, it was basically designed for really bright red highlights yes but it it, you could also use it to lift through previously colored hair, right? Mm -hmm. And it was, it had direct dyes in it and it was definitely alkaline, you know, kind of made for dark hair, but we were, uh, we were working a show and we had this girl who had virgin hair and just a little bit of color on her very ends. And we wanted to make her a redhead. So 
we did we did the whole virgin application down to where that previously colored uh, hair was, and then literally the uh, the woman who was doing or the artist who was doing the um, color took that other product, the alkaline, you know, we'll say high lift right. red, right? Squirted it into the color bowl and pulled it right through. And it totally did the trick. It was completely seamless. Yes. Yeah. You know, she was, she was like, I'm boosting the alkalinity and you know, I, I'm creating a little lift and right. I'm still adding red to it. So, you know, everything right. is going to be hunky dory. I've done that on redheads that come to me that have bricked out, mm -hmm. um, you know, red, a, a red shade. If you can keep, applying the same shade over and over and over even though it's a red shade yeah it will it will brick out it doesn't brown out because normally if it's a bright red shade it just you know it just red on red on red it looks yeah. it starts to look flat and so um it's an issue sometimes just brightening it up and i've done that even with a high lift tent not with yeah. 40 volume but a high lift tent with 20 volume mm -hmm because the high lift tent is going to give me more alkalinity. It's going to allow that 20 volume to fracture and it's going to clean it up. So now yeah. suddenly that dull looking red shade, now it looks brighter because I just cleaned it up. That's all I yeah. did. I just, I, I just created more reflect in it. Cleansed your canvas a little bit. Cleanse the canvas. So, yeah. you know, I think that, uh, these are several different approaches to breaking the rules that, that you can do. And uh, you can do them and feel comfortable doing them because they're all within the principles of color. And um, so I think that we've given a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of things to think about today. What do you think, Max? Oh, I totally agree. And I'm already feeling like a, this is like a class in the making. Yes, yes. Uh, I think a breaking the rules class or pushing the envelope or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. uh, would be um, very interesting to do that kind of a program. So definitely, we have to put that one on the on the uh, on the work to board. Do list. Yeah, and see about it. Well, listen, I want to thank everybody for uh, watching today. Everyone who's watching us on YouTube, thank you so much for your support and your great comments and great feedback. We totally appreciate that. And uh, we invite you to subscribe to our channel. You can do that right here. And uh, that way you'll get notification when the next time we drop one of our, our new episodes. Uh, that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, we also, if you want to follow us on Instagram, you can find Max and his Instagram <laughs> handle is Max M Hair. <laughs> and you can find me at Real Captain Color. We also invite you to uh, follow us on the Facebook page, which would be Guru Nation. Or if you're interested in joining our tribe, you can uh, go to f look up uh, Guru Hair Tribe and uh, apply to become a, a member of that forum and um, remember to fill out all your questions and then uh, we'd be happy to have you join our tribe. Uh, there's a lot of great things that we're doing in tribe and uh, it's only for those people that are part of that forum. Uh, we also invite you to visit our website, www.gurunation.net. Take a look at our educational portfolio, the things that we offer. Uh, several people have reached out to me and said when they try to log on to our website and they try to click our educational page, they have some challenges sometimes. It takes time to load or sometimes it doesn't load. Here's, that, here's where that issue is. Usually it's because you haven't cleared your cache and they call that cleaning up your cookies. If you clear your cache before you do that, uh, it will make accessibility much easier. If you have a problem doing that, because we're trying to clarify that and uh, get that taken care of, please reach out to us and uh, we can send you an alternative URL that you can use until we get that all tidied up. But uh, that's a way to reach us. Hopefully you found this beneficial today. We strive to uh, give you information that's fact-based, that is also scientifically supported, and uh, it is empowering to you. 
to help you navigate this amazing world of hair color and to make you more successful than you already are and help you discover that genius that's inside of you. And we try to do that with every episode of Rabbit Trails. We're very excited. This is episode 14. Pretty soon we'll be at episode 20. Max, we're going to have to have a celebration, a cake or something, right? Definitely, definitely. All right. Okay, so, oh, oh, oh. All right, our ride is here, Max. I hear it. I'll see you in the clearing. Listen, everybody, thank you so much for watching. We wish you uh, a happy week. And, of course, next week is Easter. And those of you that have celebrated Passover this week, wish you a happy Passover. And for everyone else, a happy Easter. We will see you again next time. But until then, from my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. I'm out of here. Max, how about you? I'm out, too. Thanks, guys. All right, right, everybody. Take care. Have an awesome week. Bye-bye.